Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. And I'm doing this because I'm excited because we're going to demystify yet another technology. And this is what we do here on the show. We demystify technology for you. You know, the mobile lifestyle, uh, your laptops, smartphones, whatever happens to be the hottest new technology. And speaking of which, today on the show we're going to be covering a technology that actually is relatively new, I think. Is it? Uh, it's been around for a bit, but it's really started to gain traction with the general consumer more recently. Right. And that is called? Geotagging. Geotagging. Now, you may think, hmm, geotagging. Geo is the first part of geography, tagging, attach, or geotagging. It kind of is, actually. Or it could be like our, our pal Geo, which is short for George. Could be, yeah. Uh, George we tagging? Could, we could tag him. That's true. Dunk. <laughs> but no. we're not going to do that no, to Geo. Geotagging, of yes. course, is adding geographic GPS location-based information to a photograph. Yes, sir. Right? Or a piece of data. So uh, today we're going to show you, you know, what the pitfalls are of that, why it's useful, um, and how you can do it too, and how, of course, you can protect your privacy and yes. your security as well, because that's an issue as well. Yes, it is. So there you go. So today on Live Rats, geotagging. Welcome back to Live Rats. So today on the show, of course, we're going to cover geotagging. But first, a message from our sponsor. Actually, I wouldn't say a message. It's an endorsement. We love Hover.com. They're a division here at Two Cows, uh, one of our sister companies. We love them because they provide you with domains, and you can register you know, whatever domain you want uh, with them. It's easy. It's affordable. They are helpful. Um, you can create your own vanity email address. And they're just in the world of domains, they are the place. They're the go-to place on the internet, as far as we're concerned. Yes, sir. <laughs> He agrees with me. But yes, you know, genuinely, we actually, we're actually customers. We love them. Um, I keep all my domains over there as well. Um, and it's just one of those things that you, know, you just have to try them out because cause we say so. Do it because we told you to. <laughs> so use this coupon here to get 10% off to get started with them. Uh, and if you've been resisting, like, oh, those guys always talk about those hover guys, try it out. I, I swear you'll be, become a convert, just like I was a convert from Windows to Apple. And you know how hard that was for me. So you're saying that moving to Hover is like joining a cult? No, it's, well, it's a good, it's a happy cult. <laughs> it's not a cult. No, it's not. It's wonderful. Hover to come. Check it out. <laughs> All right. Let's get on with geotagging today on Lab Rats. So um, this has been a phenomenon that's sort of built up over the last two or three years in terms of its popularity, I suppose. Right. Uh, we're see so let's, I guess, start with what is it exactly? All right, well, geotagging. Now, we have talked in the past, in the recent past, about GPS technology. So GPS looks at the satellites and figures out where you are. AGPS, which is related, looks at cell phone networks and or the satellites to figure out where you are. So since this is being built into cell phones and smartphones these days, and since these smartphones also have cameras in them, uh, some bright guy thought, hey, let's actually put a little bit of information into that photograph saying where it was taken. So GPS plus camera equals, ooh, cool. Geotagging. Geotagging. Yeah, so the way this works is each time you take a photograph, it saves a bit of information in the header of the photograph called EXIF information. And uh, what that is is a whole pile of little bits of information explaining certain things about it. So it could tell you what the camera is that took the uh, image, how long the uh, shutter was open for, uh, how wide the aperture was, uh, it can tell you the color space, a bunch of stuff that you'll never need to know about the photograph, but it's just in there, mm -hmm. uh, this, this metadata, so that you can dig into it and really get a, a sense of what's going on behind the scenes if you want to. Yeah, you could use source where the image was, not only where, where it was taken, but how it was taken, the circumstances right. and all the settings in the camera when it, when it occurred. Exactly, and as I said, where it was taken these days is one of those new bits of information in right. EXIF, uh, the longitude and latitude of where you took the picture, if you have a GPS built into the camera. Right. Now, you use this term EXIF. What exactly is EXIF? EXIF stands for ex ah, exchangeable? exchangeable Image, image File, file format. format. Yeah, it's one of those uh, things that I, I know the, the acronym so well, but you know, digging down into what it actually means. There you go. We, we discussed it yesterday, then we promptly forgot it. Yeah, so. exactly. So yeah. there we go. And that, that is an, a standard throughout the industry. So if your camera takes a picture, it uses EXIF information. Yeah. So, by the way, they don't know this, but in the studio there's cheat sheet right behind the camera. So if you ever get stuck, just look at the cheat sheet. Yeah, so over there. Over there. See, exchangeable oh, image file format. That actually makes my job a whole lot it does. easier. It really does. All right. Okay. All right. Actually, Paul, you should get a shot of that. 
<laughs> just, to, just to show you. I know it was supposed to be a secret, but you know, we'll show you. See, look. There we go. So, there you go. So we, we actually don't know anything no, at all here. We just we, read off the whiteboard. Come on, it's like a teleprompter. All right, all right good. So uh, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you covered off. So it's all, all camera details and right. that sort of thing. Now, here's the problem, mm -hmm. right? So that information is now embedded into a photograph. Right. Which is helpful if I'm looking at the image or yes. you know, I want to remember where the image was. I could even use it in an application to kind of geographically position my photographs. Yeah, in fact, we have right here, we've got iPhoto and uh, it's stored the GPS information. I can click on places and hey, now you can see where I've taken a bunch of pictures. And we've got them right here in uh, various places in Canada and the United States. Uh, we've got, uh, I went to Vegas, so there you go. So we can see all the countries and the the actual locations, Las Vegas Hilton, that sort of thing. So we right. can track this. Useful. Yes. Except when it gets in the wrong hands. Yes. So if that creepy dude who's been following you around wanted to find out where you've been, mm -hmm. or you know uh, where you live, or where you go to school or work, or where you go on holiday, mm -hmm. technically he or she, and it could be a she. Could be a she. She could be creepy too. Could you know get the image off of a public place like Flickr or somewhere else on the web? Look at the uh, geographic location, determine like for example, hey look, it's a new brand new picture of my new widescreen television. <laughs> well now you've told them where you live and where this three thousand dollar piece of gear is. Yes, not really smart. Not really all that smart. No. Right. Now, all right. So there is a concern about privacy and security with regard to that. You know. Now here's the good news: mm -hmm. is that generally. You, when you post the stuff to the web, it, it doesn't automatically display this information, correct? No, when you upload the picture, uh, it often will be stripped out by the service that you're putting it up to. That's not always the case, so you do have to be careful about it. Be that. very careful about it. So this. Facebook does this. They, they, Facebook they strip strips out it. information. Uh, Flickr does? Flickr gives you the option of including it or not including it. Okay. So, for example, uh, Right here, we've got Flickr, all the pictures that I've taken, all, all of them centered around Toronto for some strange reason. But uh, you do have this uh, ability here uh, using one of the security settings, and we'll put a link to this, uh, to automatically import GPS information as geodata or no. So if you click it, yes, that would be lovely. Then it will actually bring in that information automatically and place your photographs on the map. If you choose not to or leave it unchecked, then it won't geotag your images. It'll give you the rest of the EXIF information, like what camera you used, but not where it was taken. Smart. So stuff on there we go. Hard. So why don't we actually take a do a demo here? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm going to uh, take a picture of you here on the set. There we go. So taking a picture of you now. Yes. Now the next step, of course, is to plug it in. Plug it in. So we want to bring this over to our computer. Now while you're doing that, and did you need a couple minutes for it to boot in? Yeah, I'll just uh, have it. Uh, Pull it in an iPhoto so it takes a couple seconds okay. usually. So we're doing that. So you can turn this stuff off on smartphones. Mm -hmm. So for example, on the iPhone, there's you can turn off location-based services. And on the Android, I think I believe you can turn off location, you, the store location and camera app. Yeah, this is, depends on the other uh, version of Android you have, obviously. So uh, the one that uh, our friend Andrew Moore Crispin is wandering around, and when you have the camera app open, there's just a little radial checkbox there. And when you tap on it, uh, it turns it on and off. So okay. Okay, so we're going to import the photograph that we just took here. There we go. We're going to keep that photo, and it'll show us that uh, photograph of uh, this lovely fella that uh, I just took the photograph of. We will drag the photograph over to our desktop so that we have a location where we know where it is. Okay, there we go. Now, here's the, the trick. We have this program on uh, our uh, computer here called EXIF Viewer. We downloaded this for free, and we'll show you where to get that in the show notes. And when we fire it up, we can then open the image that is on our desktop here. And you'll see it has, uh, at the top here, Equipment Make, Apple, Camera Model, iPhone 4, Camera Software, QuickTime, blah, blah, blah. And then you go down, and we see all of the image-specific properties, including uh, how the image is oriented, the exposure, the F number, the ISO rating, the lens aperture, all of that information. But if you go down to the bottom here, you see latitude and longitude. Mm -hmm. So okay. what we're going to do here is we're going to copy that information here and just see how dangerous this is. We're going to open up uh, Google Maps. And we're going to paste this in in a format that it can use. And then we're going to press Enter. and. Guess what? It has located us right at our studio. Huh. 
And uh, in fact, it has located us uh, pretty much at the exact spot on the building where we are located. Oh, right there. So it didn't locate us to within a block. It located us literally to where we are. So wow. if you're taking a picture of your TV, as you mentioned earlier, it can actually show you which house it's in. Wow. So yeah, that's not a good thing. All right. So good. now, as we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, we can actually turn this off. So in the phone here, we're going to go into the settings. We're going to go into the location services. And then we see all of the things that use location services, so things like Foursquare and your, your GPS navigations, anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to turn off camera, and we're going to just switch those off. So now when we uh, take a picture, it won't automatically stamp it with where you happen to be. Got so it. now, of course, if you do this, you won't automatically be able to place yourself on maps or in iPhoto or any of the other applications you may use that can track where you are. So it will be have to something you enter in manually again if you want. So got it. Okay, good. Good stuff. That's great. On the Android phone, same thing, right? Android Sim similar thing. Yeah, Android phone. Again, you would go into the camera application on newer versions of the operating system and just click the radio box that uh, turns the location services off. So I guess we should also mention that if you're going to Buy, if you have a standard point-and-click camera, it won't necessarily have this GPS location information in it. No, typically when you buy a regular uh, camera, it does not have a GPS in it. So you don't have to worry about this when you're taking pictures. If it does have a GPS, there is one thing that you should really know. So like a, a higher-end uh, DSLRs will often have a GPS built in uh, for photojournalists and things like that. Uh, but typically, if you're just using a camera the way you normally would, just like, oh, that's a good thing to shoot, just pick up, jink, and then turn it back off again. That's not enough time for it to get uh, information from the satellite, so it's it won't fix, right? geo stamp it, right? Yeah. So you can generally turn it off inside the camera as well if it has GPS. So if you're going to be sitting there shooting a lot of stuff and have your camera on for a while, then it can start tracking you. Uh, so then turn it off if you're worried about that at that point. Got it. Okay. But the average point and shoot wouldn't miss. Average point and shoot is not going to be an issue. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you for that. That's great. So that's geotagging the pitfalls and the advantages, and, and maybe it's a feature you didn't even know existed in your in your camera, or at least how it works. So, uh, or your iPhone, or your smartphone, for that matter. Good. So let's take a break, and when we come back, we've got uh, clip of the week as well as uh, your pictures. That's after this. Welcome back to Lab Rats. So um, we thought, you know, it's it's interesting because we're talking about. Um, cameras that have GPS in them. Well, what about if you had a GPS with a camera in it? Uh-oh. Andrew Moore Crispin, of course, is the host of uh, Gadget TV on Butterscotch.com, and uh, he recently did a little review uh, of a uh, GPS with a camera. So let's take a quick look at that. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. So now you can see here, we're stuck in the studio right now, so we're not going to get much of a GPS fix. But uh, we do have on the map screen, we have, we're able to zoom in and out of the, uh, of the track. We can record points of interest. If you look down here, this is actually a photo that we took that's been, ge um, that's been geotagged, which is a very interesting feature of this particular GPS. It has a 3.2 megapixel camera in the back, which is capable of uh, recording stills and also um, video. If you want to see the entire uh, episode of that, zip on over to butterscotch.com, uh, click on uh, Butterscotch TV, and find Gadget TV, and it's right in there. So yeah, That device makes a, a lot of sense in some ways, because often you take a picture and you think to myself, I want to go back to this. You're taking the picture because you want to remember it, but you, know, you don't have GPS in, you can't uh, go back to that. Whereas the GPS will take you right there. That's true. Yeah, yeah you can actually remember. It's a way to jog your memory. Yeah. What beach was that? Now you know. All right, take me there. That picture looks great. <laughs> All right, good. So uh, now it's my favorite part of the show. Picture time. Nope. Picture. I mean, no. No. No picture time today? No pictures? No, no pictures. Oh. Got a video. You got a video? Yeah. Video time, video time, video nope. time. All right, so our friend David yes. uh, in Regina, yes. who has in fact sent us pictures before, yes. decided to send us a video. And it's a little bit of a puzzle. So put on your mm. thinking toque. OK. Thinking toque on. Well, hello, Andy Walker and Sean Carruthers from Lab Rats. I'm here at the Park Central Hotel. And off in the distance here is the Capitol Building. And I've got Lab Rats on my iPod Touch. Can you guess what city I'm in? It's a bit of a poser. Oh, it's a national capital, too. National capital. So, 
There you go. Can you guess where he is, Mr. Andy Walker? Well, Capitol building. Is he in Madrid, maybe? Possibly. Should I guess again? I, I don't know where it is either. He didn't tell us. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, there you so go. How, how about we make it a, a little bit of a contest so the people watching sure. out there, they can guess at it too. And if, if you get the right answer, you get Sean's iPhone. Yeah, no, let's uh, find another prize. <laughs> you can have anything on Sean's shelf. Or Andy's Elmo. Or Andy's Elmo, if you really want that. There you go. All right, so send it in. You can email us at? Not anything. I shelf. <laughs> Those are my things. Those are my toys. We'll find a prize. We'll find a prize. But you can make a, a request, and we could. Re Sean reserves the right to say no. We'll find something fun. <laughs> <laughs> and worst case, we'll send you a butterscotch mug. How about that? Butterscotch mug, yeah. Might have some t-shirts still, still around too. Who knows? Okay. Well, whatever it is, you'll find. You'll, we'll send you something fun. If you get the question right, we'll draw it and off you go. All right. You can send that too. Where in the world is Waldo, aka David, at labrats.tv? Right. Or you could also send it to feedback at labrats.tv. Feedback at labrats.tv. There you go. It's there kind of go. fitting that we have a where is he in a GPS uh, enabled episode. It's brilliant. It's great. I love it. Thank you so much for that. That's really creative. We, lo we love that. Send more in um, if on your future travels and uh, or if you other people out there, you certainly send us a video. So we'd like to see. We'd like to create video time. Yes. OK, wonderful. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else that we need to mention. You should probably zip on over to butterscotch.com and check out all the shows. We have more than 4,000 videos on that uh, site these days. So, uh, so lots of uh, really great tutorials and uh, shows and that sort of thing. New Android Weekly is now available. It's a weekly show done by Andrew Moore Crispin. Yeah. How many shows does Animal Christman do? My God. He's uh, doing things. all of them now. He's doing all of them right now. There you go. I mean, we've had him here. He's taking over the entire network. There you go. Good. Hover.com, of course, our favorite uh, place to re register domain to do more with them. Um, you can get uh, your, ten we can get 10% off using this coupon right here. And that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote. Thank you for uh, geotagging this week's uh, very interesting topic. Awesome work. All right. Well. Thank you for pushing play this week. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here talking about geotagging. If you were out there going, God, that, this beach, where was I at this beach? I don't know. I wish I knew. Well, now you do. My, my name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready?